So, let's begin. So the Red Canyon 2 tutorial, this is a, a drifting track. Um, you can win a lot of time by drifting, but even so you can still beat the staff goes quite easily by grip based driving. Um, there's some excellent corners for drifting, but there's also the potential for some uh, for a big shortcut, one of the biggest shortcuts in the game. But to be able to do that well, you really need to know where to fly in the air to be able to do that. So there's a big jump that no matter what you do, you will experience. Uh, so I'll start off with a very easy strategy to um, just dive straight down and gradually move on from there to uh, take the shortcut and then move on to some drifting strategies. So strategy one. Alright, that's the first strategy on Red Canyon 2. I think it's really self-explanatory, except for maybe a few points there. Uh, the staff goes kind of 126. The goal time is 125, which I think is fair. Um, it should be easy enough to beat that. Um, yeah, two and a half out of ten difficulty. I think everybody should be able to pick this up and learn it. So let's analyze. So I'm picking the Twin Orita with grip based driving. Settings around uh, plus five. So for a strategy like this, a lot of the principles of uh, efficient driving apply. Try to keep straight lines, go over the full length of dash plates, uh, keep your steering to an absolute minimum. Side attack first before you uh, steer into a corner. And try to minimize using side attacks in the first place. So you can just gradually stir around most of the corners. The first lap is pretty uneventful. We don't go fast enough to lift off here. I mean, there's really any way you can uh, you can do that with grip based driving so I'm just gonna have to take it slow yeah so just take it easy stay on the insides you don't really need to do any side attacks or anything here now the corner coming up is the hairpin it's a big long hairpin that's ideal for drifting and it's too sharp for us to take without any aids so you have to do side attacks and if you side attack really fast you can stay actually on the all the way inside of it but in any case just creep your grip and uh, mash that side attack button to go around it this little jump here 
uh, has some potential to win time if you reduce your landing impact. On the first lap it's not really any issue, but uh, you want to dive down just a little bit and then pull up right before you land. Again on the first lap it doesn't really matter much, but if you go faster then it will start to become more important. Stay on the insides. Here as well. Now in the beginning of the second lap, start your boost immediately. Go over the dash plate in the tunnel. Just keep a straight line, keep on boosting here. Boost once more around this corner. So now we have a really good speed to take off here and for a big jump. Now you have to pay attention because the road is very narrow and there's many roads crossing each other. So you have to actually land here. And on this one, definitely pull off before you actually land to reduce your landing impact. So you keep a lot more speed that way. This is not an easy landing at all because the road is super narrow and sloping up. So it's pretty tricky to land there. It's actually maybe even easier to do this shortcut, but you need to you need to know some basic floating physics to do that. Of course, go through the refiller. In this section, I don't boost, or well, I boost once here. Take your full refiller. And as soon as I exit the refiller, I start boosting again. And the final lap is very similar. Take the dash plate, keep a straight line. So in this entire section, I've not been steering at all. Just some very minor adjustments here. And gradually steer around this corner. Do some side attacks. And again, the same jump here. You don't want to dive down too much because the road is really sloping up a lot. So you want to land close to this uh, division between the dark and light red textures. These divisions between textures are also a good indication of where the checkpoints actually are. On all these changes there's a checkpoint which will come in useful later for future strategies so of course I've, at this point just use up all your boost go for that final refiller and finish the race it's easy enough to beat the stuff goes like this uh, the jump and the landing especially will take a bit of practice to get down but yeah if you keep good lines keep your grip with the right settings step go should be easy so that's it for strategy one I think pretty self-explanatory now we can actually do uh, some minor changes to that but now for the jump we do take the shortcut and that will win a lot of time so let's watch it first
All right, so just taking that shortcut on lap two and three, we win already about eight seconds, a good eight seconds on the previous strategy. The rest of it is more or less the same. So let's analyze. That shortcut is not uh, very intuitive. So we can start in lap two because lap one is identical to the previous strategy. You wanna keep on boosting here so you have a good pace when you lift off here. Now you don't wanna dive down too much. And actually I'll pause it here. As you can see um, on this area, you can see the track texture change from dark red to light red. This is the checkpoint that kills many of the shortcuts attempts. You want, you need to be above it, above the track here, so you, and you need to be close enough to it to make it count. So what you want to do, you want to dive down just a little bit and stay about in the middle here. The hairpin is down here behind the speedometer. You want to stay about in the middle here, dive down, and as soon as you're pretty close to this point forward, you can use some right side attacks and maneuver the ship into the hairpin down here. If you go straight for the hairpin, there's a good chance that you'll be e either under here or you're too far away from it to make a checkpoint count. So that's what you can see me do here. I'm flying straight ahead and here I'm starting to turn right into the hairpin and land in this hairpin. So the question is about the settings, yeah they're about plus five. I'll check for you in a moment. So of course you want to keep as much speed as possible from actually landing way back far ahead in the hairpin. So start to track through the hairpin really quickly, keep your grip and boost afterwards. After refill or resume boosting, your energy is pretty much full here. So keep on boosting all the way to lap three. Boost again here, and then once more. So we're going a little bit faster than we were going in lap two, but the principle is exactly the same. Your right side attack steer to about in the middle between the road on the left and the road on the right. When you're very close to that checkpoint there, do some quick right side attacks and move control stick to about upright to dive down and to the right. Uh, into the hairpin. It's sort of a mini double tap dive without a very optimal setup, but that does, that's okay. This is the easiest way to take the shortcut and land, land it in the hairpin. Of course, afterwards, just use up all your energy, keep on boosting to finish the race. And so this wins about four seconds per lap compared to the previous strategy. Should be easy enough once you know that you have to look out for that checkpoint. All right, now let's move on to strategy three. This is going to be completely different because, as I said in the beginning, Red Canyon Two is a is a really great track for drifting. So now we're switching over to a drifting strategy, and that also means that we can do the shortcut already in lap one so we can win a ton of time actually about 13 seconds compared to strategy two um, real quick i'll check what the exact settings that i used um, somewhere here further back So I believe it's about plus five. Yeah, so plus five, that's it. <laughs> All right, move on.
Let's watch Strategy 3. Alright, so as you can see, the strategy 3 is way faster than strategy 1 and 2 because drifting really pays off on Red Canyon 2 and this strategy also has the potential to beat the world record already. Strategy 4 isn't much different but there are some small nuances there. So let's analyze. Of course you want to pick full acceleration Bloodhawk the Bloodhawk over the Night Thunder because we have a floating section where we take the shortcut so lower weight ships have the benefit, the advantage. You want to start out with a hard wheel drift on the left here. I always aim for well over 1300 kilometers per hour. So I watch the speedometer and if you have a good drifting angle you, you will get easily over 1300, about 1350 or even higher. Drift well around this corner, take advantage of the full width of the road. Now, do a real drift on the right side, that's the easiest way to take the shortcut and you have to go 930, 40, maybe 50 and then you're, you'll lift off. Same idea, so I'll pause here. This is the checkpoint that's killer, so we want to, again, just keep, keep it straight floating path in between this road here and the hairpin here. And when you're far enough, you can start preparing for a double tap dive right. So first I will move the control stick up left to point the nose of the ship down left, which is a good diving position, diving angle for a dive to the right into the hairpin. And then when we start to dive, I move the control stick up right. So that's what you will see. That's what you will see me do. So move the controls to get up right. And then uh, double tap Z to get through this hairpin. You want to steer into the hairpin already a little bit or else you will never make it at the full speed from your double tap dive. Drift well around this corner. Hey Daniel, welcome to the chat. So again, this is, these are pretty good corners for drifting so take advantage of the full extend on the road, the full width of it. You cannot do a real drift here on the left because there's actually a minuscule patch of dirt there that's not visible, but it is visible when you play the expansion kit. But you can bounce into the rail, bounce drift around this corner and then boost drift at the start of lap 2 over the dash plate. On lap 2 I always boost once more after this uh, dash plate boost ends. To build up the speed and then boost drift around this corner with the high walls. We want to build up a good amount of speed so we uh, can take the shortcut well. If you go too fast it's possible to lift off a little bit early so you have to be careful with that that you actually uh, your floating pad is still correct and you're close enough to the checkpoint. What I do I just do two right side attacks to maneuver my ship above the hairpin and then I start a 
drift to the left already in the air. So I start out with an air drift and in the middle of the drift I land in the airplane and continue, ext continue the drift uh, into the refiller. It's very tricky to take the full refiller because it's very small, narrow strip of it. So that will definitely be uh, troublesome and need some practice to get that. Of course, get this whole left refiller. Keep on boosting immediately after this because now we really want to preserve the speed into lap 3. Uh, for energy management reasons, because now we're going traveling quite a bit faster on lap 2, I skip a boost here. You have to do that to, uh, yeah, to, ma to make it without skipping any of the really important places where you boost, which would be the corners, the boost drift. Shortcut, same idea, wrong right side attack. One or two. Move to that um, where the texture changes from dark red to light red. Two more side attacks. Maneuver the ship above the airplane and then you can start drifting already in the air. Try to catch this refiller strip. And yeah, boost drift here and just keep on boosting to finish the race. It's not a very complicated strategy, so it is possible to get quite fast times with it, even about to around a minute people have gotten with it. And in potential you can even beat the world record, although not by much. And then we are at strategy 4. So strategy 4 is almost exactly the same as strategy 3, except for one dive, one dive in the, in the opener lap which is different and that you can win about half a second more with. So let's watch it. So you use my dive? Yeah, I do. So this is the exact same strategy that the world record uses. And that opener dive is not easy at all. That's why I rate this 7.5 out of 10 difficulty, which is still not too bad, I would say. So yeah, it's basically the dive and the opener that's different. So let's go over it one more time to wrap up Canyon, Red Canyon 2. Yeah, it is very difficult. So yeah, you start out the same way as strategy 3. Hard real drift on the left side here. You want to go, you want to really aim for 1350 or higher. If you do it really well, if you get a good angle quickly. Now you drift around this corner and normally you would do a real drift on the right side after the corner. We can actually extend the drift all the way into a real drift on the left side. Now this dive is going to be really tricky. So let's let's analyze. What I do, you basically start a double tap dive right from the get go, and you land in the in the hairpin. Now what I've said with previous strategies, there's this checkpoint way up ahead in the corner where the red texture and light red texture change, 
and that corner is uh, going the corner to the right before the hairpin and that's the point where the track is up pretty high and you cannot dive under that point because the game will make you crash so you have to stay above that point and close enough to it to make the checkpoint count while doing a double tap dive right and still land in the hairpin so how, how i do that i start uh well but as soon as you get airborne i move the control stick up left to put the nose of the ship down left the usual position for a double tap dive right and then i move the control stick up right while meshing the r button initially Drift out the left a little bit, motion the ship down left, control stick up right, mesh the R button. And now you can see the, the route straight ahead from the ship, there's that checkpoint, and we cannot go under that. So, what I do, I at this point, I only hold slightly upright or even a little bit down on the control stick because I cannot go under that point, but I need to keep moving right gradually. So until I get close to that checkpoint, I'm really keeping it easy on the diving down and diving right part. Just very gradually, just partially upright, until I'm close enough to the checkpoint. And now I'm free and I can just fill the hold up and right and land in that heartbeat. Now before I actually touch the ground, I stop when my right side attacks because you need to steer into the corner just a little bit uh, while you mesh the Z button to make it. You cannot go uh, much faster than this without crashing into the walls. So that's the limitation of it. And that's why you can only win about half a second doing this. There isn't really any good way to preserve the speed. The rest of the track basically is the same as the previous strategy. Again, you cannot really real drift here, but you can bounce into the wall. I bounce just once, keep it really inside on these turns, keep a good drifting line. And especially on your opener, your opener lap, you can win quite a bit of time here. Get a low 23. So after this boost, boost manually here on the straight, and then boost drift around the corner with the high walls. Stop boosting. Right, two right side attacks is what I usually do. To move about here, in the middle between the pieces of road. When you're close to the checkpoint, I do two more right side attacks moving right. Above the hairpin, start the air drift left and land in the hairpin while you're drifting. So Dan, is this about how you do the dual tap dive as well? Or do you have any a different method? I'll be curious to know, but this is how I, uh, how I would do it. Yeah, so the, the strategy is the same as the previous one. Keep on boosting here, boost once more into lap three. Take the dash plate. Skip the boost here. We don't have any more energy, unfortunately. Two right side attacks again. So you get the idea. What you also can do, and it actually wins a tiny bit of time, is do a sort of a double tap dive rather than just start an air drift really early to land in that hairpin. But you cannot really take any of the speed with you because you have to move into a drift anyway. Uh, so it's very tricky to do that and you can win maybe a tenth or two tenths at best. It's not worth it in my opinion. Say hello to the staff ghost. We can just about lap the staff goes here, the end of lap three, and get a sub-minute time. 
So this this is really a fun track in my opinion. It's not very difficult and Yeah, see you again. <laughs> if you learn a shortcut, and especially if you learn a drifting strategy and you can do the shortcut in lap one, you'll see your time go way, way down. And yeah, if you can know how to drift well, you can be well sub 110, sub 15, and even sub one minute if you really master it completely. So very fun track, good stuff.